Warning, the following audio transmission is based on theory and is intended for entertainment purposes only. It's Doomsday and its affiliates will not be held liable for anything your dumbass does. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome everybody to It's Doomsday Podcast. Today is July 20th, 2023. Time is 9 p.m. And joining me back to the show is B-Man J. What's going on, dude? I'm doing great. How are you, sir? Oh, I'm doing fantastic. Um, for those of you that don't know, I know Jay knows, but uh, so prep stock this year is canceled. Um, we are not having prep stock 2023. Jay was going to be an instructor there at prep stock this year. And just the stars didn't align the way they wanted to for ticket sales, so we're postponing the event till next year. Don't worry, if you bought a ticket, your money will be refunded, and hopefully Jay will join us next year for prep stock. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think you canceled it because I was going to kick your ass. Oh, that's what but... it was. I was I was terrified, <laughs> man. I was like, I don't know if I could go. I don't know if I could go through with this or not. <laughs> <laughs> So, no, but, but that, uh, that would have been a good demonstration, though. It would be. So. so just to talk a little bit about that before we really tear into what we're going to talk about, um, guys, Prep Stock 2024 will happen. We are changing location. We are changing venue in order to have a cheaper event to put on. The problem we couldn't do this year's event was the lack of ticket sales, and it was going to be a big loss of money to host the event. And I'm not talking a little bit of money. It was a good bit of money. I was losing out of pocket to do the event. Not that I do these events for a profit, but I can't pay out of pocket to host every single one of these events. So next year, it's not even half the cost of hosting. So we should definitely be able to make things happen next year. Even if we only have a little bit amount of ticket sales, we should be fine. Um, but to get into this episode, uh, you know, Jay and I came up with a topic pretty quick on the spot here, and it is managing work-life balance, which I think is good. I don't think enough people are doing this. And Jay, it sounds like you have a lot going on lately. Uh, You mentioned to me that the wife took off and left you. She uh, is overseas now. What's going on with that? (laughs) Well, she didn't leave me. She just went on vacation. Her mother passed away last year, so... um... She had to go over there and finalize the state. They're selling the house and everything. Plus, she hasn't been over to see her family in quite a while. So that's what she went over there and left me with doing everything on the farm because all my kids are moved out. So it's quite a bit to keep up with that. Plus, I had a couple acting jobs, had a couple camera jobs that I had to work on uh, doing camera work. And, you know, then cryptocurrency and everything else that I get into. And it's just, it's a lot. So, any anything cool in the realm of acting lately? I did a couple short movies that are hitting the uh, festivals, and Punch the Boss has been doing really well. And then there's Speed Game. That one's coming out. Um, that's going to be in the Knoxville Film Festival. And uh, TV shows, I never knew, you know, and I just never quite understood what typecasting was until... I got into acting and now it's like I'm constantly getting jobs for being a cop or a detective. I'm like, Oh, I guess I do have that look. You kind of do. I mean, I I kind of see you as more of a mountain man. I'm surprised you don't get more like lumberjack type roles. (laughs) That'd be fun. (laughs) (laughs) But I really like playing the bad guy, but I always get these good guy roles, which is still fun. Everybody remembers the good guy. You hardly ever remember the bad guy unless he was just phenomenally bad as being evil. So, Right. Well, I imagine it's got to be a lot of fun to do. Oh, yeah, it is. So That's why I keep going acting. back and they hardly pay me anything. 
Well, yeah, yeah. I well, you know, I've talked to a few actors um, yeah. that are on the the smaller side of the spectrum, I guess you'd say, and and that's a lot of what they talk about is it's it's really hard to make money doing what they're doing because they're short roles and they pay very minuscule, and then you're always like hunting for that next one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Yeah, I don't know if I I don't know if I could handle doing that, man. Because it seems like you guys put out a lot of effort for a little reward. Oh yeah, I I submit usually hundred to one hundred fifty different roles, and I'll get one. So oh, wow, you're constantly working for getting that next paycheck. No, I I totally understand that. So managing the work life balance, you're on the farm by yourself right now, having to do everything. God, I don't envy you. <laughs> Neither do I, me or my body. I mean, I'm beat up already from everything that I did in my life. And it's just, I do a little bit, come inside, lay on the floor, go back out, do some more, come back in, lay on the floor, repeat, you know. So <laughs> I'll get there. I eventually get all the chores done. Right. And, you know, I, I think that's like, okay, so I think it's a lot of why people aren't doing homesteading as much anymore and why there's no family farms anymore is because of specifically this work life balance. We've gotten turned off to this because we're so busy with our daily lives. We can't handle doing these things anymore. Are you looking for something kick ass to add to your closet? Reaper has the hookup for t-shirts, hoodies, button ups, hats, beanies, and plenty of other badass products. You can check out Reaper Apparel Company at www.reaperapparelco.com and use code DOOM10 for 10% off. Jester only stands behind brands he believes in, and Dan at Reaper Apparel has a mission, and Jester is on board. Go check out www.reaperapparelco.com today and use code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire order. Why be a sheep when you can reap? Use code DOOM10 for 10% off at www.reaperapparelco.com today. Yeah, I mean, and if you have a a little garden, it's fun. But when you grow like we do, we grow enough for our entire family and extra. And then, you know, all the animals and all the rest of the stuff, cutting hay, all this. It's a bigger farm. And there's just my wife and I now, so it takes quite a bit to keep it going. So the families, you know, that had a bunch of kids, you know, some of them stay on the farm, but a lot of them left because they just got tired of that wake up, work all day long, go to bed, then get up the next day, repeat. So that's why a lot of those family farms have just disappeared. You know, I heard a very... I came across this video the other day. I don't know what platform it was on, but it was this gentleman talking about how we think we're going green by the things that we do. And he tied in the old school lifestyle to where this was actually more green. And the example that he gave, and this ties in really well. So the example he gave is, you know, back in the day, everybody had chickens or they had animals. And this is where the scraps went to. This is where all your food scraps went to, right? And he talked about how nobody was really recycling. Nobody was sending stuff off the compost and everything just went to the chickens in the backyard. And this is before you had commercialized chicken feed, things like this. And he ended up getting into, at the time you had a lot less, um, you had a lot less issues, right? And he got into kind of how you're paying, you're paying, the garbage people and the compost people money to haul these things off to a landfill and they're burning diesel fuel to get there. And then they're taking this compost and they're transporting it again with diesel fuel back to the consumer to have them grow their fresh foods and vegetables. And there's a disconnect there. And the disconnect is you could do this at home, right? With your own backyard chickens, your own backyard garden and potentially save this money and have no carbon footprint left at all. And then what got even more interesting, and this is something I put together after the video, the things that you're personally consuming on a daily basis that you're getting scraps from, you're giving to these animals, and they're turning these back into nutrients in the form of eggs, 
and then you're getting these nutrients right back, right? Yep. And, you know, so like when you talk about the farm and how you're doing it yourself and, you know, how the kids are growing and they're out of the house and a lot of people can't do this, I, I think the nine to five and the big corporations are mainly to blame for us getting pulled away from that lifestyle. Oh, yeah. And it's also the cost of living goes up that a lot of people just can't live off the farm unless they have a lot of land. And, you know, so they kind of, they get that side job. Well, that side job becomes 40 hours plus because they have to work the overtime. And, you know, they, they move from the country to get into the city. So they save a little drive time. So they get a little bit more of their life back. And now you're living in the city and you can't plant a garden. So it's one of those catch 22s that, you know, if you stayed out there on your parents, you know, hundred acres, then you would have been fine. But even then over the generations, you know, if you had a hundred acres and you had eight kids back in the 1800s, well, now you have, everybody's got 20 acres and or less. And then those kids, and you know, they all have to live somewhere and it, the land keeps getting split up and up. And then, you know, the kids just don't want to work. So they sell it and they move to the city. Now that hundred acre farm is a subdivision. Or because I had a friend that, you know, they, they invested into a bunch of silos because if the corn prices were going great, as soon as the corn silos were built, all of a sudden the bottom fell out of corn. And that I think it was two years later, they ended up selling pretty much the entire farm field. And it was a subdivision around their farm. And they have this beautiful house, beautiful barn in the middle of a subdivision, just so they could pay off the loan for the silos. Wow. I mean, okay, so my thought process on this is the goal is they want everybody to be working for a company. They want all digital dollars. They don't want anybody to be self-sufficient. We know that, right? No. But But then they don't pay you good enough because they're getting machines that can do it for free. I mean, you go into McDonald's now, and you don't even talk to somebody. You walk up to the screen, you punch in your order, and you wait for somebody to serve it. Well, eventually, you're going to punch in that order, and then the conveyor belt's just going to bring it out and drop it to you and you're going to grab it and go sit down right and i mean it's you know it's a really we're on this threshold right now of taking humans out of the workforce right and i've been against the automated checkouts like at walmart and different places like the self-checkouts i've been against these for a while and it was never it was never against the idea of taking humans out of the equation. It is now, but it never was then. What it was then was I'm doing the work for the store in order to pay yeah. them. I should get a discount. Why yeah, am I not exactly. getting a discount for bagging my own things, for, you know, checking out my own items? Because you're no longer having to pay somebody to do this. Why am I not getting 10% off by using self-checkout? Right? Exactly. Yep. And they, fully agree. they've they been slowly, slowly, like, getting us ready for this humanless contact. I mean, okay, we've got self-checkouts. We've got automated car washes. We've got all online banks with no tellers, no physical locations. It's all digital. We even have – so, Jay, do you know about the Mr. Beast restaurants? No. Okay, so Mr. Beast is this this famous YouTube guy, all right? And apparently has started, and I'm still trying to figure out how this works. He has Mr. Beast Burgers, right? And apparently, mm-hmm. and I don't know if it's like the whole thing or whatever, but what I was reading is this is a virtual restaurant chain, okay? To where there, I guess there's either very limited, there's very limited physical locations or there's no physical locations. Something to this effect, and this is like only available through Grubhub or whatever, but it's a totally digital online menu, and you go in and you put your address in, and it'll let you know if there's someone that makes and distributes this food in your area. Okay, this is hmm. my understanding of how this is working. So everything is getting on that line now of there is no more interaction. We've been seeing it with online shopping. A lot of the time, you got to think, man, if you order something on Amazon or eBay or whatever – and you're not home, you're at work, you may never see that package get delivered. You just come home and it's there, right? Yeah. Like, I physically know who my mailman is. I see that guy, right? But there are people out there who have no idea who's bringing things to their house. That's true. Now, see, 
Now, the computer geek in me with my computer degree and all that, I love the technology side. I would, I really want to, I'm going to be looking that up to see how that's all done. But the prepper in me is going, that's too much control being taken away and given to machines. And Do you have enough food in your pantry for when disaster strikes? Go to www.readywise.com and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off your entire food order. ReadyWise offers long-term food storage items such as chicken and beef that last up to 15 years. But that's not all. Go to www.readywise.com and use our code DOOM10 for 10% off of organic food as well. Offering chili, pasta, and soups, they have you covered. Did we mention they have fruits? bananas, blueberries, strawberries, and apples, just to name a few. With many more food options for your home, car, or bug out bag, ReadyWise has your six. Go to www.readywise.com now and utilize code DOOM10 for 10% off. You know, it's jobs are being lost because nobody's serving you anymore. And I like to go to places that I like to see the kitchen. I want to see people making my food. I just don't have that trust, I guess. And I worked in this in the industry when I was a kid, and I seen people spit in police officers, you know, uh, food before they made it and everything else. It was just disgusting. So I like to see the cooks doing my doing my food. But that computer side, yeah, I just I love the technology and you know where I can just sit at my home and I can order food to my door. You know, you get that box full of, was it Hello Fresh or something? They they deliver you food with all the contents, and you just got to make it. Right. But even people don't even want to make their own food anymore because they're so tired. They work, you know, all this time, 40 hours, or, you know, especially if you're working overtime so that you can pay to get that, you know, stop at McDonald's and stop at the other places to eat because you don't have time to make it when you're home because by the time you finally get home, you're so tired, you just want to sit on the couch and vegetate in front of the TV. So it's one of those things. Do you work less and make your own food so that you could save money at the grocery store? Or would you rather work more hours and just buy the hot meal at the restaurant or the drive through And, you know, so it's, it's kind of which one do you really want to do? And most people lean towards the convenience of just driving up, telling them what you want, and then they... You drive up to the next window, pay for it, and you got your food. Right. So that's – and they are they are taking all the humanity out of it. So this is what – let me – I just pulled up Mr. Beast Burger's website. All right. And this is what this says. Mr. Beast Burger is a virtual brand offering a separate concept to run out of your kitchen, available for delivery and pickup only via food delivery services. So – I guess anybody with a restaurant or a commercial kitchen that's approved can get into this virtual burger brand, okay, and I guess just sell through, like, Grubhub or DoorDash or whatever. Okay. Hmm. I, I mean, it's interesting. <laughs> it's really interesting. I mean, and honestly, from, from a money-making standpoint, this is genius. You don't have to manage locations. You don't oh, yeah. have to have physical – I mean, having a physical restaurant is a lot of work, right? Oh, yeah. So he's able to make the money just off the branding and ingredients. Yep. And he doesn't have to pay workman's comp, doesn't have to pay insurance, doesn't have to you know, pay somebody to clean the floors, take out the trash, doesn't have to pay the cooks. Right. He doesn't have to do anything. Right. He doesn't like have to be said, there for running that restaurant, You got so much overhead that you're charging a lot of money to pay your workers and pay the insurance and, you know, everything else. So he's cutting out quite a bit. Yeah. It's a heck so, of a profit. So his, his burgers should be a lot cheaper, but I'm sure they're not. Well, it doesn't, I'm looking at the website now. Um, <clears throat> and if I go to the menu, we'll look up a uh, combo here. It just, it doesn't even tell me a price on the website. It just says order now. Oh boy. And then you type See, in, that's another then you type in your delivery address, and I guess it lets you know if you can get this delivered. Okay. Right? See, that's another bad thing that we've gotten away from is everybody's using the plastic now instead of actual cash. And 
I was taught every every week you balance your checkbook, you know, and you take cash out and you use cash, and therefore you hardly will ever be in debt other than if you have to buy a car or a house. So I've never really been in debt other than uh, the one brand new truck I bought when I got out of the service and my house. That was the only loans I had. Otherwise, I always use cash because if you don't have the cash, then you shouldn't be buying it. But that's not how we live now. It's uh, just take just take um, slide your card or tap it. And if he doesn't even have a price on there, then you're going to go through the whole order, order it. And you're like, ah, yeah, it's a little expensive, but I already did everything. I'm too lazy to go back and do it something else. So you just hit send. Right. right. You know, it's it's funny you brought up the cash thing because it is something I did want to reference while we were talking about this work-life balance thing. So we've all heard the rumors and we've seen it to where they want to go to a full cashless society, right? We're came, almost there. I came across – I've been learning a lot on Instagram, dude. Let me tell you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I came across a video of Andrew Tate, and he had a great explanation of why they want a cashless society. And I didn't think about this, but it makes a lot of sense. And this is the example he gave. So, Jay, let's say I'd come over to your farm and I would give you 50 bucks uh, for a specific amount of honey, right? Okay. Well, you take that 50 bucks and you go down to a local restaurant and you spend that 50 bucks there. That restaurant owner takes that 50 bucks and goes to the local car detailer and pays that 50 bucks and gives it to the car detailer. Then he takes that 50 bucks and he goes to Walmart, right? Mm -hmm. That physical $50 actually had a value of $50, no matter how many times it exchanged hands. It's still a $50 bill. Yep. Now, when that $50 bill gets entered into a large corporation like Walmart, it now becomes a digital currency. So Walmart distributes that money back to their suppliers, back to their workers, back to the electric company, whoever. And as this is now changing hands in a digital fashion, the banks all get a little piece of this, right? So you might have a worker that gets a percentage of that. His account may be overdrafted or somebody puts that, you know, onto a credit card and they're waiting for the interest to occur on it, et cetera, et cetera. And that $50 starts becoming less and less money because the banks and the corporations are all taking a little piece of this, right? So by the yep. time that $50 may get distributed back into cash, it might only, it might only be 25 bucks that gets back into the market, right? Mm -hmm. Because it was, it was picked on and pieces were taken of it so many times. And you can do that with a digital dollar. You can't do that with a physical dollar bill, Right. It yep. maintains its value no matter how many hands it exchanges. So now you have employers that want to set up all direct deposit, right? Everybody wants to do direct deposit. They don't want somebody to be able to go and physically cash a check. The banks don't want that, right? So yep. they've made this extremely easy to utilize your debit card or credit card for every single purchase that you need. And so many companies out there are saying, hey, we're not taking cash anymore. We're not taking or, you know, we're not taking cash anymore, blah, blah, blah. And now it's gotten to the point where and I've been guilty of this, like going to a business that's cash only and being like, well, I don't have cash. I guess I'll have to go somewhere else. Right. Yep. We, we have one store in my area that is full cash only. They do not take cards. And a couple years ago, I hated this. I was like, man, I have to go and get cash out to go to the store. But now I'm fully understanding why they're cash only because they see the direction we're going in. Yep. And it's it's amazing, dude. You get up, you go to work, you spend your physical time on a digital currency, on money that you never see, right? And then you spend it through plastic. And again, there's never that hard currency exchange like hand-to-hand -hand dollar bills, right? And yep. the banks are able to sit back and collect this and make more and more money as they're closing down locations, as they're firing people, as they're getting rid of services that they once offered, and we're watching their revenues increase, it's crazy to me. Oh, yeah. And so, have, you notice the government does not want anything to do with cryptocurrency, right? They're squashing it. They don't want us to switch over to cryptocurrency because they're like, it's just not secure. It's this, it's that. 
it's like, okay, so we have been doing digital currency with as soon as credit cards came out. You know, that money is transferred electronically. Right. The, you know, when you do online banking, that's cryptocurrency. You know, that's, you're doing electronic transfers. You're doing, when you go to Amazon, you order something, your money, you don't touch your money. The bank, or your credit card goes in, the bank switches money here and there you pay your money online to pay off the credit card it's all digital currency the reason i think they don't want to go to uh cryptocurrency is because it's on the blockchain and every transaction is minted one after the next and you can go back and say okay no this this is correct or this is not and it's going to be correct most likely because there's no way to hack into you know, a hundred to a thousand different computers on the uh, blockchain. But what we're doing now, they can make money disappear all the time. They can wash it. They can make it disappear. They can, you know, there's so many ways to play with it. Like you're saying that $50 cash is going to be 50. But when you are, when you transfer it back and forth from this bank and that bank and each person's taking their little bit of money, and they always round up a little bit or round down, depending on what they really want to do. So they can make that money disappear a whole lot easier. And I think that's why the government doesn't like blockchain theory or cryptocurrency because. Fire is one of the most basic essentials for survival. Whether you're camping, hiking, or preparing for disaster, Blackbeard has your six. Go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. Blackbeard offers stormproof matches, plasma arc lighters, fire starters, and ferro rods, all of which are great for your bug out bag. Once again, go to www.blackbeardfire.com and utilize code DOOMSDAY for 10% off your entire purchase. They could be watched on every bit of money because all that money that goes overseas, do you think it really goes overseas or do you think it's going in the pocket? All right, so I, I could tell you this much. I <laughs> The government is are, are the biggest mobsters on the planet, right? If mm-hmm. you think organized crime went away, it didn't. It's just now referred to as the government, okay? Yep. They are laundering so much money, it is unreal. And, right. you know, people talk about, you know, the billions of dollars that are going over overseas to uh, Ukraine, right? Listen, I'm... Yep. I'm going to tell you what, in, in my eyes, I'm seeing what's going on over there. And I don't know what the funding is going to, because I'm not seeing any advancements. No. Right. Like it's, it's, it's a bunch of bullshit. And I think the money laundering is eventually going to run out. I think people are going to start getting wise to this because for, for, to me, I'm looking at it like this. This is what they're wanting to be like a forever war, a forever conflict that they could keep pushing money through. But eventually someone's going to say, hey, what's going on over here? You know, where is this going? And the American people are waking up. Everybody was on board with this, with Ukraine and this conflict in the very beginning. And now people are just like, well, when is it going to be over? What's going on next? So, I mean, ultimately, you're talking about another media distraction to divert from this when they pull out of there. Yeah. And we'll just, we'll pull out and everything will be calm for six months to a year. And then we'll find another conflict that we can join into. And then we'll be fighting for them forever. And right. it's, they like to launder that money. And even think about the last stimulus check that they sent out, right? You got what, $600 or $900, whatever it was. And I looked at, okay, there's about 343 million people in America. And that's not, taxpayers that's just that's from kids to um retired people right Right. you looked at how much money that actually went into the stimulus check you know to pay everybody that six hundred dollars if you divide it by the 394 thousand or 343 million people we all as taxpayers had to pay back over 30 i think it was like thirty two thousand dollars for that six hundred dollars that i got Huh. Yeah, look up the stimulus checks and see how much that stimulus package 
went for. You be start doing the math. They don't want us to do the math. They put these huge numbers out there. You know, do you even can you even fathom a million a million dollars sitting in front of you? But they're sending over sixty billion dollars or whatever the you know. I hate politics. I try to stay out of it, but because it just fuels my blood pressure. But <laughs> we can't fathom the numbers that we're throwing out there. It's like the deficit. You know, we're in the trillions. Can you imagine even anything a trillion? It's so big of number they don't care anymore because they know they can't combat it, and we we're tired of fueling it. You know, or trying to stop it, so it just keeps going up and up and up. No, you're you're one hundred percent right. Um, <clears throat> we got a few minutes left here. One thing I did want to get into with this work life balance thing was uh, th- how hard it is to take vacation time for Americans that work regular, you know, nine to five jobs. And so, first off, the one thing I'm seeing right now, Jay, is they sell us on vacation time with employment now, right? Mm-hmm. So if you start here, we'll start you with X amount of vacation time, or there's employers out there that say, oh, you need to wait a year before you can get vacation time. And I look at other countries, man, and they don't, they don't operate this way. Their workers get three, four weeks a year automatically that they could take at any point in time. And it's not vacation request forms. It's like a vacation notification form, right? So You could base it, you know, here it works a lot different. You have to get vacation time approved. You can't take so much a year. These people overseas, they basically say, hey, I'm going on holiday. I'm going to be out for four weeks. And they say, okay, cool. And they work on keeping their workers happy. That's not something you see here. Want to be a guest on the show? Email it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. That's it's doomsdaypodcast at gmail.com. So no. I, I did want to point out that we are in, you know, this is nothing but a form of modern day slavery with the way we work here. Yeah. And they've completely pulled us off the homestead, completely pulled us off the farm with these ideals that you have to work in order to survive. Right. And yeah. a lot of the, a lot of what they're doing is, is they're selling us on insurance. Like you can't afford this if you don't have employment. Right. Yeah. True. And that's one of the big things they're pushing to motivate people to keep working because at the end of the day, so many people are in debt, so many people are broke, and you go to try to go to school to get an education to get out of this, you know, broken, working for nothing type thing. And then when you do, you're further displaced from family, further displaced from where you grew up at, where you had roots set. And that's a big part of this is the way the structure's built now, it's to unroot Americans. It's to unroot people and get them somewhere else. Get them somewhere else where they're going to have to spend more money and pay more to survive every day, right? Because oh, yeah. if you inherited the family farm and the family vehicles and you were local in your area making good money, what would you spend money on? Yep. You know, and you want to be, you know, what they consider a value to society because you're not putting money in the, into the uh, into the community so that they can tax you. And it's also, you know, you got your student loans in there, but back to your vacation time, you know, okay, so when you usually, most companies only give you, what, two weeks now? So I work 50 weeks for those two weeks that I can take off. Well, usually you want to take off some time around Christmas, unless that company closed down, then it's kind of free time. But those two weeks, you you have all these plans of I'm going to go here with the kids and the wife or the husband or whatever, and we're going to do this and this and this. You shove so much into that two weeks so that you can have so much fun that you're so tired when you come back that you still got to go back to work. And then when you go back to work, you usually sign up on the overtime list or if they don't have overtime, now you're paying even longer to pay for that vacation. And even next year when you go on vacation again, Have you even paid off that previous year's vacation? Probably not because it was all put on the card because I'll, I'll I'll take care of it later. And, you know, I was taught in school, put $2,000 away for 10 years. Don't touch it. And when you're retired, you'll have a million dollars. Then I was also taught that, you know, if you had $2,000 on your credit card and you made the minimum, it's going to take you 
18 years to pay it off, and that $2,000 is going to be like $87,000. So, but they don't tell you that anymore. There's no home ec, you know, home ec in school. They would teach you how to cook, how to, you know, keep things going, how to take care of a kid, you know, uh, check, balance your checkbook. They don't want you to do that anymore. They want you in debt because that's how companies make money. Because all of a sudden they're just pulling this money out of nowhere because, you know, okay, I paid $2,000 on the credit card, but now I owe this bank more money than what I actually paid for unless I paid off in those 30 days. So now I got to pay even more for that $2,000 item. And it's just it's this huge circle that people get wound up in and they get so far behind. Then you have the uh, consolidation loans. Well, that's, that just makes it worse because now I paid off my credit card so I can put more stuff on my credit cards. And now I also have a consolidation loan I got to pay for. Right. So it's I hard totally... not to be wrapped up into that. <laughs> It's it's a vicious cycle, man. It never ends. But Jay, we're yeah. about at our time limit here. You got anything you want to tell the listeners before we're out of here? Uh, pay with everything with cash, and that will help you break down your debt. Uh, do not make the minimum payments. Pay a little extra every month if you can't afford to pay off what you bought. Then you think about buying it next time, and you know try not to get in debt because that's the worst feeling. Most. Most people die of stress, you know, stress related things. Cancer is caused by stress. Heart attack is caused by stress. Stroke is caused by stress. What causes your stress? Usually your job and your money. And the money is why you're at work. So if you really truly hate your job, I hated my job for 25 years, but it paid everything off and I didn't have to worry about money and I was good. So hopefully your stress comes down. This is an emergency action message. At approximately 1 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Nora is tracking 15 ICBM nuclear missiles inbound to the following cities. Orlando, Miami, Pittsburgh, Dover, Newark, Richland, Philadelphia, New York City, Baltimore, Los Angeles, Las Vegas, Boston, Seattle, Detroit. This is an extremely deadly situation. Stay tuned, the next emergency message will be a presidential address.